James Common guy on the bike. Bringing you another half-assed report. And uh, today we're gonna look at the new minus space here in Dumbo on Main Street. Well, we're gonna do a little walkthrough of Robert Swain Color Energy. And we're going to uh, talk to Matthew Delegate about the new minus space. Well, this is a nice little, it's almost more like an installation. So we've got three large paintings here in the main gallery. And uh, I believe these are all, was it 10 foot squares? Nine foot squares, okay, so nine foot squares. And uh, as you can see, Robert is a pretty uh, intense color theorist and deals a lot with pure colors. And uh, this is a beautiful suite of paintings. Um, one of the reasons I'm down here is because I got a special request at uh, the James Com channel asking me to come down and cover, cover this. So uh, that plus the fact I wanted to debut the new space, I thought would be a great reason to come down. Well, all of these pieces are untitled and uh, they're all acrylic on board. And uh, I'm not sure whether he has built up that texture with some kind of uh, compound or whether that's just uh, the nap from uh, many coats of acrylic put on with a, some kind of a roller. But, uh, well, I did a program on Robert's work at the old mine of space probably about five years ago. And uh, also I covered a show that he did up at the uh, Hunter exhibition space. I think it's up on 41st Street on the west side. So this is untitled also. Nine by nine. It's called 29 dash 15 slash 7e green. Well, Robert is very uh, systematic with his colors. I actually look at these paintings, they almost have a, an op art quality about them. Looks like that uh, hot section of pink has got a kind of a violet fade in there, but uh, it doesn't. It's all optical illusions. Well, I like this kind of uh, this T form in the middle where you've got the the highest intensity of the uh, color purities, and. Uh, goes up to almost like a brown there. And then uh, you have various levels of intensity. I don't know how many of you are into color theory, but uh, color has some qualities. One of them is the tint. And that is uh, the intensity of the color and it's gradual mixing down with the white. If you look at this central top square that's probably the darkest uh, tint and then you go down here to this square in the corner and that's the lightest and that's not white but it's approaching white well yeah I, I was actually able to uh, scare off the uh, hordes of people coming in here yes, uh, we're talking to Matthew Delegate uh, tell us a little bit about the new minus space well, um, thank you, first of all, for being here. I appreciate it. Oh, my and, pleasure. Uh, I have to say you were, the, I think, the first person that ever wrote about us when we started 12 <laughs> years ago. As like, what's going on in Brooklyn? And, um, you know, you're the most recent as well. So thanks for hanging in there with us, first of all. It's well, it's been, it's been a wonderful journey, and we're just getting started. I know, and we've had the opportunity to show your work a bunch of times, too, so I love that. Um, so, yes, yeah, so welcome to um, our new space. 
Uh, we're now um, in our fourth space, 12th year. Um, we're here in Dumbo at 16 Main Street on the ground floor. Ground floor. In a very kind of porous and open kind of setting with huge picture windows. And this so, was formerly the Galapagos building, right? They, it was. They've been here for six, six or seven years, maybe? Yeah, they were here for about six, seven, eight years. And uh, in December announced that they were decamping to Detroit where they bought, I guess, some sort of auto body compound, auto body manufacturing compound, some 100,000, 200,000 square feet of space. Only a couple hundred thousand square Only, feet. Only, which you can do in Detroit. You, know? you have a pocket change. Yes, yeah, so they uh, relocated and the uh, owners of uh, this building, Two Trees, um, who were our landlords in our previous two spaces, asked us um, what we thought about moving here because they were thinking about developing it into a gallery building and we um, absolutely saw the benefit in it and um, we jumped on it. So, so tell me how much you have, how many square feet do you have here in this new space? I think we have about 1,600 square feet. And, which uh, is our biggest space so far. Right, and um, how tall are these ceilings? 16, 17, 18? <laughs> almost 17 feet tall. 17 feet um, tall. You know, the new space required us to buy a new ladder. So you know, we made uh -oh. some investments in that, getting inside. But um, yeah, so it's got a totally different feel and the fact that we are open on two sides with huge picture windows that are visible from the street, I mean, it's been completely different. We have natural light pouring in. And I've been here for about 20 minutes and I would say we probably had 15, 16 people drop in in that period of time. And, yeah, uh, and it's been like that for... Foot traffic has improved. Pretty consistently for the last two weeks and it's a mixture of... Um, Certainly artists, which is really our core audience, um, sure. arts professionals, curators, writers, um, some press people, neighborhood uh, people that live here in the neighborhood, there's a lot of people that live down here, as well as during the week, lots of people that work down here. They're well, you know, another thing that I noticed is that uh, the Lower East Side is now one of the hot art communities and uh, it's spreading down and it's sort of coming around the base of the Brooklyn Bridge and so if you're out taking a little art walk, you get down in that neighborhood, it's not that big of a deal to just walk over the bridge and pop in here at uh, Minus Space. Yeah, I mean, we are uh, super accessible. And in fact, the F train, as in Frank, runs right through <laughs> the Lower East Side, and we are one stop on the Lower East Side. All right. Uh, York Street uh, here in Dumbo. So if you get off East Broadway, and the next stop is York. And uh, I've done it many times, and it's literally about 12 minutes door to door. Well, I'm always on my bike, and uh, it's probably about nine minutes for me. Exactly. Anyway, let's talk a little bit about Robert's work. Yes, yeah, so what we have here, uh, this is a, a new show of Robert Swain. Um, did he do this specifically for the new space? He did, yes. Oh, he, good he, for uh, you. Thought of it as um, really a sort of a site-specific project, a site-specific piece. Um, there's three paintings. They're all new, all from this year. They are all um, Sort of oversized for most painters, uh, nine by nine feet, but they are kind of a sweet spot that he's arrived at over decades of working. Um, the name of the show is Color Energy. He's been investigating color now for 50 years. Uh, he's developed his own color system, which um, took him about 20 years to develop, uh, starting in the mid-1960s. This guy's um, moving way too fast. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, Part color circle. So this is a circle that kind of loops back on itself. It's unlike a rainbow where it goes from one end to another. Um, it was done completely by eye and by measuring and by looking. And then he took each of those 30 colors and ran them through kind of two other gamuts. One was value, lightness and darkness of a color. Right. And the other was saturation, the pureness of color. And from those 30 colors, he grew the system to be almost 4,900 distinct hues. That's right, 4,900. Now you said that he, in his studio actually has bottles, like... <laughs> yes. <laughs> Does he actually have the 4,900 bottles and they're all numbered and labeled and yeah, they're laid all, out? Each of the numbers has a kind of serial, each of the colors are like a kind of a serial number. Sure. Uh, hue value saturation. And he has many of these colors kind of pre-mixed in these big uh, ball mason jars on shelves. And actually the first show we did with him a few years ago. That's right, I did a report on that. And you yeah. had some of them, right? Yeah, it was a show called Primary Research. And we, it was the first show ever to focus on like his color research. Not his paintings per se, but what he does kind of behind the scenes to make these guys. So um, these three paintings are new. 
they're all a little bit different than earlier work in that they're symmetrical, uh, bilaterally left to right. They um, also are done on panel, which is a little bit uh, different. Uh, usually it's painted on canvas. So is this one single panel that these are on? They're not actually. Or they, they require attached they panels. Of think about kind of, they're kind of engineered from the ground up and he started thinking about wow. this really about six, seven, eight years ago about how to make a big painting that was easily movable, like thinking logistically how to make a painting that you could get through a standard size doorway, for instance, where you didn't have to put it on a collapsible stretcher. Or you didn't have to tear out a wall. <laughs> or you have to tear out a wall, or how do you get it in the crane, you know, that back to the front of that truck. You know, one of the things I was wondering about is this texture that he's got on here. Is this uh, some kind of uh, compound that he put on the board to just give a texture? Is that from the nap that he's built up just from putting layers of paint on there with a roller? It's, it's a roller texture that's then brushed over and he... Oh, okay. And that is actually a new move in these works as well. Um, they're traditionally, he's painting traditionally super, super flat. Yes. Almost like polished fresco-y like surfaces. Um, Except for the, as I saw, the last work that he's doing, which was kind of dealing with um, kind of uh, broken brush strokes exactly. and trying to work out some kind of a system using different layers of uh, brush strokes over ground colors and things. Exactly, those brush strokes got built up pretty heavily into kind of like an impasto surface. So working yes. through the lens of those and then coming back around to these grid-based paintings, um, what he's talked to me about is Having, um, you know, in the earlier works, he would really feel like the lights sort have of slipped off the surfaces of them because they were so smooth. And with this new body of work, he has a little bit of tooth to it. It's almost like an orange peely surface. Yes. That's completely even over the entire surface of the, uh, the painting. But uh, the idea was to kind of capture and hold the light on the surface of the work. Uh-huh. So... Um, Give the color a more of a dry sense. Yeah, it's, it's more sort of a physical, material thing rather than exclusively sort of a, a chromatic thing. Um, yeah, so for these, for these works, I mean, he's really, over many years of painting, he's really arrived at kind of a, a size, like color, you know, when you work with color and Bob's subject matter is color, and kind of the, the energy that, that color emits. You know, when you work with color, you have to assign it a kind of structure. It's one of the big challenges. Um, and he's not the first to work with color, uh, but he is the first to work with it in this way. Um, but yeah, color has to have a certain kind of structure. What is that structure? What does it look like? So for him, he's arrived after many, many, many years, decades of working. Um, he's arrived at this kind of basic element, this kind of basic structural element. So he's working on grids. Um, those grids modulate from side to side, top to bottom, left to right, and modulate diagonally across right, the surfaces. Yep. But he's really arrived at a square foot as being kind of the optimal size as a kind of container for presenting color. And it plays a couple of different roles. I mean, it, and this is the way he describes it to me, but the color at that size is able to maintain its integrity as a color. Right? Oh, that's so, interesting. So it, it, it you know, there's a, a sort of a, there's a kind of a tealy green that exists here. And this square is one color, okay? It also has enough edge space on the four sides of it to sort of interact with the colors around it, right? So what you have here is a single color that is both a single color and now as part of, um, what's a phenomenon called, you know, simultaneous contrast of colors, which has been... Simultaneous of, contrast of colors. Yeah, which has been... It's also known as years. SCC. Yeah, okay. Um, and you'll note that when you look at these, optically in your eyes, start to combine these colors, and then high as well. Um, so that you start to see, based off of the juxtaposition, sort of lighter edges. So you've got yes, a no, I was commenting on that. go from light to dark, light to dark, light to dark. And all of that is not actually in the paint itself, because the paint is... It's all just an optical illusion. It's all happening in your rods and cones. So you are actively... You're activating these paintings. You know, the strange thing is... That's true, but when I look through the video monitor, I also see the, uh, the halos on there. Anyway, Matthew Delegate, congratulations on the new Minus Space. Thanks for coming. Here on Main Street. The show continues until uh, Saturday, July 4th, so please come. All right, I'll do that. Thank you for being here. And as always, thank you, Kate.
Oh, thanks, Scottish Octopus.